tell us a little bit about the design and why it was so specific and what influences and references you were looking at. The first thing that I got when I sort of uh, realized it was time to start writing was um, this look. I saw him. Uh, that kind of in that first scene when he's sitting in that kind of rundown trailer, but he's so meticulously put together, and he's sort of squared off on the camera, and um, hit, you know those suits at that time were. And Oscar and I ended up talking about this. It's almost like a you know a suit of armor. And I think when I said that to him, it, it, it he understood it. Um, so. I sort of saw that high low and, and then heard his voice and that's when I knew it was time. So, so um, you know, it's a, influence wise, it's a mix of a lot of things. That coat is actually like a rep coat. It's a, it's a preppy coat, you know, uh, that Wall Street had kind of usurped. And then, um, so that's a Brooks Brothers, you know, coat from that period. It's obviously big. So again, it kind of fills in, um, you know, it's, it's, about, it's, an, it's, it's about holding your ground. Right. I want to ask you about the title of the film. It's both kind of a marker, historic marker, and something of a, of a tease almost, something of like, this is but isn't what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, the film is um, obviously built on the, on the structure of kind of a classic gangster film, almost going back to the 1930s. It has all these sort of familiar signposts that kind of pop up along the way. Um, so it's 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 the title is is sort of a call to arms in that way. It's like you know, but what ends up happening, of course, is it's just a normal, somewhat you know, people that walk around on Earth with one foot in front of the other, just the way I do, um, and it's their experience in that year, which which was statistically you know the the most violent year on record in New York City history. So it's. It's there, but they're actually, it was a challenge from a writing perspective because they're actually running away from it or right. isolating themselves. The German cars, the house in the country, the, you know, their office is in that gated compound. So they're trying to shut it all out. But um, obviously, if you're trying to be an engaged person in the society, eventually, you know, those, those, those things are going to come back to roost. And... Um, and by the end of the film, they do. When you're talking with Oscar about this character and what his what his uh, dilemma is, is violence or the rejection of violence as much practical, more practical than it is moral? In other words, is it a business decision, not a philosophical decision? Yes, but that was something that uh, we had to arrive at. Um, it, it didn't reveal itself to me right away uh, as I was reading it. You know, for me, I was I had a hard time understanding why this person who has decided to live out in the countryside, who has just seen someone come to his house, still refuses to legally arm himself and protect himself. I just I had a hard time understanding why that would be. And, um, and it wasn't until I started reading about sociopaths <laughs> that, <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, that are, you know, in business in particular, and the idea that um, everything is uh, strategic, right. and and it and it, it's kind of stripped away the moral aspect of it, uh, and I realized, pragmatic. and I realized actually it's it's very pragmatic. Right. The plan is growth, and it's it's unlimited growth. Uh, he doesn't. He not only wants to be uh, uh, the uh, the king of heating oil in Brooklyn and Queens and the boroughs. He wants to go into Manhattan. Right. He wants to be in bed with politicians. And there's no way that's going to happen if somebody comes to his house and he has a gun and he shoots someone and kills someone. If he murders someone, that's exactly what they want him to be, which is just some Latin thug. Right. And so he's doing everything to fight that. And uh, and. I could definitely get behind that from a strategic standpoint. JC and, and Neil, your first collaboration together, you set your film Margin Call in a very confined space because you didn't have the money to move around. Uh, your next movie, All is Lost, you stripped away dialogue because you didn't want to fall into the voiceover or whatever it is you were trying to avoid of that <laughs> genre. Now to finally have locations and dialogue, yeah. I mean, it must be liberating, but also kind of, what? how do we do this? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah. Placing those sort of yeah, placing those sort of uh, walls or fences around what kind of a movie you want to make for JC and for us has always been kind of a part of the creative process. Sort of fence yourself in and then say, okay, what can I do inside of this box? And opening up that box definitely was a cool opportunity both to learn um, and play with some bigger toys. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of challenges and 
you know, a period piece with not, a, it's still an independent film budget, and we uh, also had the coldest winter in many, many years in New York City. Um, so it was violent and cold um, this, this year, um, which literally this thing called the polar vortex is what they called it, but it was a, a huge low pressure system that pulled in on this cold from northern Canada. Um, so it was crazy record low temperatures. I mean, these guys were insane troopers to a, to, to stomach the cold, but the, uh, this crazy cold came in, and then the night before we started shooting, there was a blizzard. And so we sort of woke up the morning of and all walked in and, and I remember Oscar and Jessica were like, so what's the plan here? There's like six <laughs> inches of snow. Um, so we just made a snow movie, uh, which was sort of our only option, we but it stayed cold long enough yeah. that the snow didn't melt away for most of the shoot. So that's almost entirely real snow in the movie. I want to hear a little bit more about the specific business you chose to set this movie in and why it works. It seems like it's almost a family business, a neighborhood business. What was it specifically about heating oil that you guys thought was a great setting for this? I asked the same question. <laughs> you asked him a lot of when questions. I was starting up. Did he give you answers? Well, it, it was. He actually did. He gave me a good one because I, I, I and you know, you'll speak more to this, but I, I, you know, heating oil and real estate and business um, are so dull to me. <laughs> uh, it's just things that I'm not... Perfect. Clearly, I'm an, I'm an actor. I didn't go into either of the, any of those things. But, um, and so it was, I was like, all right, how am I going to bridge this gap? And as an actor, I'm like, well, I guess this guy loves heating oil, so JC, tell me everything about <laughs> heating oil. And, uh, and I'd ask questions, then at one point, I think he just got frustrated. You're like, it's, it doesn't matter. It could be anything. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that it's heating oil. <laughs> Poor I, I was horrified. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I was like, what do you mean? And he said, well, it's, it, he's a businessman. He's a salesman. Uh, that's the commodity that he chose. And, and, and he, chose, he chose that because it's, um, you know, when it gets cold in the Northeast, the last bill that people stop paying is the, the heating oil. Because if not, you know, that, that's a life or death situation there. And that's a business that, uh, that this guy wants to be in. JC, this is obviously a period film. What do you think its modern relevance is? I hope it's a classic, you know, just a, a, a classic character study and, and, and yarn, you know. Um, it's, it's sort of op operatic, obviously. It, 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 it um, presents itself in this very formal way, but I think hopefully feels um, alive and real and present. So I'm, I'm not sure. I never wanted the, the, even though what's going on, you know, at that moment is so important to all of their lives, there are always hardships, you know, and, and, and there's always those ups and downs, and, and those are the moments you sort of learn things about yourself, obviously. So, you know, the, people have said Jessica's character is, is a little bit, you know, M Lady Macbeth, and, you know, he has these sociopathic tendencies, but you're seeing these, him, and both of these characters, at this moment in a cauldron. So the, my sort of defense of, of the characters, in a way, is... Um, you know, don't we all have that in us at times? Like, aren't we actually sitting here allowing things to to happen that, that we shouldn't be? Yes. Um, so, you know, it, it's a level of what your responsibility is for it. So I think it's just a fascinating time to sort of see someone deal with that. So they're obviously struggling with, I, I don't want to paint it too on the nose, but I think there's tremendous similarities, you know, all teasing Detroit aside, you know, people don't realize how quickly things actually do change for the for the worse and for the better so the fact that we couldn't find anything that looked and you know all all the graffiti in this film for the most part is sort of been digitally brought in from period pieces and then we superimposed them all over the film including that whole subway sequence and it's a the film is a reminder that things can get worse but they also can get better you know things that you think could never i mean new york was left for dead at this right. moment so um and there was a better there was a better way of doing it and that does get rewarded to a certain extent right. that he didn't succumb to violence right. that he didn't decide to escalate yeah the film's about escalation and and he chooses um as a you know the city in 1981 was dealing with all of the, there was a intense trial and a whole bunch of sort of watermark things going on uh, that that related to the city's relationship with with violence and whether it was going to become the wild wild west or take a different path and and it took a very specific different path and and became the city you know now I can't afford to live there but it's like it's a um, you know the city certainly on the whole is is a much much healthier organism.